This episode of Into the Boundary is powered by Thomas Financial Group. If you enjoy our episodes, make sure you like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more exclusive content. You can also listen to us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. This is Daryl Watson. I'm Eric Taylor. I'm Lil Ford. You're listening to my boy Lou Mobley on Into the Boundary. This is Jamal Cussin. I just got finished with Lou Mob doing Into the Boundary podcast. You an athlete from the city? Got a story to tell. It's a great opportunity to get your voice heard, man. Come holla at my man on Into the Boundaries with Lou Mob. Just finished the Into the Boundary podcast with Lou Mobley. More athletes should come down from Philadelphia and do your thing. Want to tell your story? Come on out. And talk about, you know, all your, your experiences and, you know, get your voice heard a little bit. So sit down and talk to them. Check them out. Welcome to Into the Boundary, the podcast with no boundaries, where sports meet real life. I am your host, Lou Mobley. And today we are joined by one of four players ever to score a thousand points at two different universities. Three-time All-State selection, three-time first-team All-Catholic selection, All-Delco, Player of the Year, Co-Philadelphia Catholic League MVP, State Champion, School Record Holder in Points at 1,493 points. At Niagara, he was Rookie of the Year, made the All-Rookie Team, First Team All-MAAC, Regular Season Champs, transferred to Hoshka, he was First Team All-CAA, Player of the Year. Now he's a pro ball player playing overseas. Wanye Green. Is it Lou Mob or Lou Mob? Chill out, man. How you doing, man? I'm doing pretty good, man. Thanks for having me. No, nah, man. Definitely thanks for getting back to me so quick, man. You know, I be hoping that you ball players don't be on Hollywood. <laughs> no, not all of us, baby. <laughs> no, nah, um, you know, just um, people always say you got an old man game. <laughs> You know, just break that down for me, you know, what that what that really mean. Um, uh, it's just my moves. You know, my certain, most of my moves are, you know, they look old man gamish basically. And, you know, I might hit somebody hit somebody off with something and it might look like my body hurt. So that's why I think <laughs> I, that's why I think a lot of people say I got an old man game because I'm a little I'm a little tricky and I might uh I might do certain stuff that'd be like, oh like like somebody back in the day or something like mm-hmm. that. So that's why I got the old man game. No, man, I just remember you being super crafty and being able to score, man. So yeah. it, just, it just made a lot of sense when people are saying that. I'm like, yeah, man, it don't look super athletic. Yeah. But it, that, that joint going in, though. Yeah, it's crafty, but I get the job. In, you know? That's that's all I'll be worried about, getting the job. Now, I'm a little flashy, but, you know, I, I just like to do what I do for the team, you know, try to make plays. So. No, just tell me um, about your upbringing, you know, where you was raised at and your family dynamic. Um. I'm from North Philly, if anybody didn't know, uh, 23rd in Indiana to be exact. Uh, you know, my mom was a single mother, uh, you know, raised me the whole time, didn't have a father, so, you know, it was hard for her to, uh, you know, do her part. And, and basically, I didn't, um, I started playing basketball when I was 10, when I was 10 years old. I was in the football, actually, before that, when I was around, like, 8 or 9, so I started liking basketball when I was 10. And got into under the whistle playing ball, and after that it just took off. Every year from there, I started getting better and better, working on my game. And, you know, it's just it's just been good for me because I, I I worked on my craft so much. So everything everything up to this point has been good for me. What attracted you to basketball? You know, you said you was doing you were playing football at first. Mm-hmm. You know, and I don't know if you probably like the physical part of football, but <laughs> what attracted you to basketball? Um. I would always, I would always play like with the old, the older guys. You know, I was always, when I was younger, I was always trying to play with the older guys. And, you know, trying to get in their ones, they wouldn't let me play. And you know, we'd be on the block and we'd just be playing little dribbling games. And I just, you know, as a young boy, you just like running around and stuff like that. So it's like, I like this. You know, mm-hmm. I like the dribbling stuff. And after that, I started working on my handle. And after that, I started liking it more and more, and it just got more involved into it. So. So where did you go from middle school? Uh, I went to well, I went to I went to Finletter, a school called Finletter in uh, Ireland, and then I transferred and went to um, to uh, Saint Benedict's, and after that, um, yeah, Saint Benedict's. So when I went to Saint Benedict's, that was a Catholic school. That's that's where I think my uh, you know my career started going higher and higher after that. 
So you played ball there and everything? Yeah, I played ball, yeah. And what was your career like in middle school? It's funny to ask somebody about you. What was your career like in middle school? But, you know, how how, how did that go when you were there? Well, it was good. My seventh, my seventh grade and eighth grade year. My seventh, my eighth grade year was my best year. So um, it was it was pretty cool. Uh, some of the guys that, that I went to school with, I still talk to them now. Some of the guys I don't. But overall, it was a you know a great experience to go to you know go to school with your friends. You know, a lot of a lot of people don't go to school with their friends or people that they like. So it was always it was it wasn't that hard for me basically. So. When I went there, St. Louis was a perfect school for me to play basketball. They were a top, one of the top programs. And you know, when coach when coach got me over there, he basically added my two other friends, uh, three other friends, sorry, my three other friends, and you know, it was just everything was great for me. So I, I enjoyed it, and it was a it was a learning experience, definitely. So did you go through adjustment going from like public school to Catholic school? Yeah, definitely. Man. Public school. When I was in public school, I think it was. It was more physical playing, uh, basketball wise. Um, it was more physical playing, and Catholic school it was just more like strategic. You know, you gotta you gotta know the game, and you gotta know your sets, and know who you're playing against, and scouting courts and stuff like that. And whether um, to to public school, it was it wasn't it was just playing. You know, you just having fun and just playing and trying to beat your guy off the dribble, trying to score and do all these things for your hood, basically, and everything else. So. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure, you know, like you said, you had a, a, a real good eighth grade year. Mm -hmm. What school started to, like, try to recruit you for high school? Uh, Roman, <laughs> Newman, I hate Newman. Uh, <laughs> Newman, um, Carroll, St. Joe's Prep. Um, Mostly, yeah, mostly all the Catholic schools, but um, a couple of public schools, but mostly Catholic schools, all the Catholic schools. Which were, you know. So what really attracted you to Carroll? Um, the coach, uh, the assistant coach, Tori Harris, um, one of my one of my great, great friends, um, you know, he was always in my ear about things, uh, coming in and seeing how, you know, we could turn the program around and, you know, win a chip or win chips. And... You know, just have a, I have a great career there, and plus me coming into high school, you know, I was I was getting recruited by Roman, which had Malik Wayans, and you know other type guys, and Newman had the uh, Tony Chenault and other people like that. So I didn't want to come in there. I didn't want to go to a school where it was, you know, it was top players there. I wanted to go where I wanted to go. I didn't want to do what anybody wanted me to. I wanted to pick my own decision. And I thought Carol was the best fit for me. So I picked them and I ended up there. No, it definitely worked out for you, man. You know, you just talking about, you know, the other premier players in the league and not basically saying, like, I don't want to go and wait. I want to get on the floor early. Yeah. You know, I want to play. And that's kind of when it went into your decision. Yeah, basically. And I and I didn't want to – I wanted to compete against those guys. I didn't want to be up under them playing against them in practice, but I wanted to compete with the guys in real game situations. You know, I always wanted to get better. And I thought going to Carroll would help me do that. Even if it wasn't Carroll, going to maybe even St. Joe's Prep or something like that. But Carroll was the best fit for me. And, you know, playing against those guys helped my game a lot. So I thought Carroll was the best decision for me to go. But even at the time, this is a question I'm just coming off the top of the head. Like, mm -hmm. even at the time, you take the chance to go to Carroll. Do you know who's at Carroll already? No. I, the only person I did know at Carroll was uh, DJ, DJ Irvin. Right. One, I, I played against DJ and AAU. I always played against DJ and AAU days. So um, DJ was the only guy I knew coming into Carroll. Were you concerned, like, going to Carroll versus all the guys in the city, pretty much going to Newman and Roman and St. Joe's Prep, that what other guys could I get here to play with? Or you just worried about yourself at the time? Uh, I was just worried about myself. You know, I, I, knew, I knew Newman and Roman were going to get, you know, the top guys, regardless you know, if I didn't go there or not. So I was just worried about myself. You know, I, I came into Carroll. I said, I got one mission. I always had one mission to beat every team in the Kevin League. So I, I definitely did that. But I always wanted to get better each year that I played. And I definitely did that as well. And, you know, I didn't, I didn't really worry about anybody else. I just stuck to, you know, perfecting my craft and trying to be the best player that I can. No, so when you go to Carroll, is it everything you expect just school-wise? Like when you went there, did you really enjoy the school? Yeah, yeah. I think high school, 
Carol, Carol was one of my best experiences in my life. Um, it was it was a great experience with my teammates from you know classrooms, students, and stuff like that. It was definitely one of my best experiences that I enjoyed and you know and been around. So tell me how freshman year went on the court at Carroll. Uh, it was pretty. It wasn't rough, but it was a it was a wake up call because you know when I came in. I didn't start right away. I was playing behind uh, this guy, Lamar Jackson. He was a good player, uh, nice shooter, and played defense. And I was playing behind him. So it was kind of a wake-up call, like, yo, if you want to you wanna have a great career, if you want to be the best player you can be, you got to you know, you gotta wake up. And, you know, my coach, and my freshman year, I wasn't, I wasn't shooting a lot. I was a little timid at first coming into high school, so he would always get on my back about shooting and try to make plays. But in my head, as a freshman, I wasn't like I wasn't all the way there. So I had I had a pretty good wake up call, and I think halfway through the season, I got better at making plays and knowing what to do in certain situations for the team and stuff for us for us to win. So you were you were a backup for varsity freshman year. Yeah. Yeah. Did you play any freshman or JV? No, I started straight. I, I went straight to varsity. I didn't play no JV or freshman. That's that so <laughs> crazy, bro. That's what yeah. that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. That's crazy. I was straight to varsity. So. No, so like at, at that point in your career, what would you say that they were really uh, asking you to add to your game to be a more whole complete varsity player? Oh, um, defense for one. You know, uh, coming into high school, it was it was way more physical than it was in uh, middle school. So. You know, certain guys, you know, you had to play them a certain way and you had to, you know, show them that you was there. You, you didn't want to just be there playing defense in their face. You wanted to show them, like, yo, I'm here. Like, you know, I might knock you off your, I might knock you off your, you know, going to the layup, knock you off your, you know, toes and stuff like that. So you wanted to make sure that guys knew you were, knew you were felt. And um, defense was one of them. And, you know, just making shots, uh, whether it was, you know, catch and shoot or, just getting my own shot, you know. Um, that was, I think, they were the most top two things that that I was that was that I was learning uh, as a freshman. In middle school, you played more ball dominant or you played off ball. I always played ball dominant. Right? So, so was it like that at Carroll? Yeah, I always played ball dominant, point guard, and then uh, my freshman and sophomore year, I played uh, point guard. But then, like junior and senior year. I started playing more uh, shooting guard. You know, me and DJ would switch. So I always started point guard, and then sometimes during the game, he might bring the ball up and run the plays and stuff like that because we were always in the team. So I think that was, a, uh, that was a good adjustment for my game as well, learning how to play off the ball too. It probably yeah. helped your shooting a lot. Yeah, definitely, man, definitely. So um, how did freshman season go, like, record-wise and stuff? Uh, we, we were pretty bad. We wasn't bad, but... We weren't that good as we were uh, going along the next couple of years. Um, you know, we had we had a good team, but we just couldn't connect. You know, on the court, um, and it was just like everybody was for themselves. Basically, and you know, freshman year, me coming in freshman year, my mentality mentality wasn't like really right, and you know, I had to learn from that. And further going on to my sophomore and junior year, you know, I learned. You know, you got to build character and, you know, do certain stuff to help out the team, to, you know, to help the team be together and win. No, just to describe for my listeners, what does it mean as a basketball player to be like, you know, guys were for themselves? Um, just guys, you know, they're they not sacrifice, sacrificing their, you know, sometimes you got to sacrifice your body to, you know, to win. You might, you might need that charge. You might need to dive on the floor for a loose ball. You might, you know, Need to do something else just to just for the guys to not even win, but make a certain play that the guys would be into it and you know have energy and potential to go on and win the game. So I think that freshman year it wasn't like that. It was just up and down, but we never was on the same page for and um, I think I learned that pretty quick coming on. Did you did y'all go through a whole bunch of you know? In my opinion, like if I was on a, wasn't on a team that was really competing for a championship. I might want to pull a couple more shots. I might want to pad my stats. You know what I mean? Did y'all go through any of that early on in y'all uh, career? No, not no, not early on. I mean, certain guys we knew that were that were going to shoot, but it wasn't guys that you know that were just blatant just to shoot, just to shoot. Okay. You know, we just like I said, we just wasn't connecting. You know, everybody everybody was doing their own thing, 
but it wasn't it wasn't as a unit. You know, we wasn't as a unit as my freshman year. All right. So what changed going on the sophomore year? Sophomore year, we just I think we communicated more. You know, off the court, I think that helped a lot. Off the court, we communicated more, and we had older guys, a lot of older guys on the team that would um you know speak up. You know, sometimes. You know, guys would be BSing in practice. You know, guys would speak up, like, yo, come on. Like, we got a game tomorrow. Like, what are you doing? Stuff like that. And, you know, I think that helped a lot going on. You know, uh, it it always it always helps build the team. And, um, you know, you learn from day, days like that, like certain practices and, and certain games where you make mistakes, the team going to help you up. So I, it, it all goes hand in hand with that. No, man, just walk me through this sophomore year, you know. I feel like you kind of – you guys kind of break out and still one in. So just walk me through that season, you know, some of, some of the games and how did that season end? Um, sophomore year was a good year. Uh, I, I don't remember the record we finished at, but I think we finished we, – we lost in the playoffs and then um, we had a good catch with me record. It wasn't great. We had a, we had a good catch with me record. We didn't beat Newman in the Roman, but – um, we, we were playing pretty good basketball. Everybody was on the same page. Everybody knew their role. You know, I still was learning and, you know, maturing and, you know, making plays for my team and doing everything I can to, to be a leader as a sophomore. And uh, so I know so I know halfway through the season, you know, we started clicking more and more. And as it got towards the state, you know, the states, you know, we lost after we lost in the playoffs. You know, we we had a we had a good meeting where we talked about like, yo, we we need to win the state championship. And after that, after we had that talk, it was just like everything changed. Everybody minded changed. Everybody played their role. Nobody did nothing out of the ordinary. You know, everybody I did. I made plays with the teams. Uh, I made shots. DJ he made shots when we came. Uh, you know, Andre he was our he was our he was our board guy and played defense and hustling. Chief was our big man and he was, you know, gonna get every board and score whenever he can. So I think going into state going into states, we just had a whole different mindset and a whole different fire about us. So on that on that road, you know, y'all 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 running to Newman again. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, you, you already expressed how much you hate Newman. You big know, dogs, right. And uh just talk about that little at that point, you know, this is Y'all starting to have a little rivalry, mm-hmm. you know. Just to describe the the rivalry and describe that when y'all met him in that state championship. I mean, in that state playoff round. Um, it was it was big because you know we knew we could beat them, but we just every time we played them, we made the wrong mistakes, and I think that's that's what separated them from us. They always, when it came down to it, they always made big plays. They make a shot. They get the loose ball, they get the rebound, or get a defensive stop. So that always separated us. And you know, when it came to the states, it was just like all or nothing. You know, just they here, they in our, they in our conference. They, we played them tonight. Like, like, what are we gonna do? And everybody just had a different type of energy about them that night. You know, uh, neck and neck the whole game, back and forth. Score, they come down, score. Uh, we come back, score. They come down, we get a stop, fast break, layup. It was just neck and neck the whole time. And, um, you know, I think playing against those guys gave us more confidence to win the whole state championship after we beat them. And, um, you know, it gave us more confidence than ever to, to win the whole thing. That's when, after we beat them, we knew we were destined, to, you know, to win the state championship. Now, who were some of the uh, top players on Newman when y'all was going through these wars with them? Uh, Tony Chanel. Tony Chenault, Tyreek Duran, Lemin, Lemin Fulton, uh, Scooter Gillette, you know, uh, basically a lot of a lot of South Philly guys, and um, you know they were they were the top players on the team. So uh, Mustafa, Mustafa Jones, he was the, their shooter. So we, they had a lot of good guys that you know they played their role and did what they did. No, just 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 because I'm here, because I, I like when guys talk about the guys they played against. Mm-hmm. Like, who would you say, you know, as a guard, like, who was some of your, your toughest covers, like, the best guards you've been played against? In high school? Yeah. Uh, Tyreek is definitely one of them. Tyreek Duran, because he's so smooth, man. It's like, you can't knock him off his game. You know, you might give him a little bump to try to, like, knock him off his game, but he'd come back and hit you with something crazy and be awesome, go to lay, fillet, mm. you know, something crazy. 
And um, I think he was always one of the toughest guys. He was so, so controlled. He never let nobody, you know, try to push, uh, rush him and stuff like that. So I think he was definitely one of the toughest guys I played in the high school. No, just especially, like, especially on my fault, especially uh, the Malik Waynes and, you know, stuff like that. So, yeah. He another one, man. He he got a little strong game, yeah, too. Yeah. yeah, like I can only imagine I've been a perimeter with them guys. Mm-hmm. But um, just um, finish that playoff run. Who did y'all actually play in the States? The state trip. Uh, we played Green Greensburg Salem. I think the name was if I'm not mistaken. Greensburg Salem. And when we played them, it was just like it was just a run in the park because we were like we had this whole different fire. Like we came out pressing the whole game. We never really pressed. So we came out pressing the whole game, trying to send a message, like, yo, we here. And you know, I think we started we started off with like a twelve to five run or something like that. And then after that, it just took off. We ended up winning the game by at least like twenty or thirty. Mm. Yeah. So we 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 were on some stuff, man. When we when we played that sophomore year, after we beat Newman, that I think that was that was our that was the light bulb in the head. Like, yo, we can win this whole thing. What was it like holding that the trophy up, man? <laughs> the greatest feeling, man. It's always the greatest feeling when you win. It's, it's never. It's nothing better than that. When you win, nobody can't say nothing. You know. It is. Is what you gonna say? Oh, you did it this way. No, we won. A win is a win. A loss is a loss. Right. So we got there, you know, we're holding the trophy up, you know, locker room. Everything was great, man. After that, you know, it was it was back to reality. We had to go back to the year and try to, you know, try to compete for another one. Yeah, just speaking about the expectation, you know, now that y'all didn't jump down and won a state championship, y'all beat uh, y'all league rivals. Mm-hmm. Um, what was the expectation junior year now? Like, y'all going to repeat? Y'all going to do it again? Yeah, our expectations are basically, uh, you know, basically win the state title again, but we wanted the Catholic chip. That was our main focus. Um, we definitely wanted the Catholic chip. You know, we wanted to beat Newman. We never beat Newman in the in the regular season or playoff game. So our whole focus is like, we got to get past them. If anything, we got to get past them. You know, and um, the regular season, I think we were undefeated until we got to them, and then we lost to them, and then – uh, we ended up winning like the rest of our uh, rest of our league conference games. So you know, once we got my junior year, once we got to um to the playoffs, you know, we seen them again, championship, neck and neck, having a great game. Um, but somehow, women they they know what to do in in clutch moments. You know, they they make big shots, they get defensive stops, they make plays for each other. So. That was our biggest. That was our biggest upset. So y'all end up losing in the chip game. Did y'all get opportunity to play in states? Yeah, we got an opportunity to play in states. Um, I think we lost in the semifinals my junior year during the states. I forgot what team we lost to, but um, yeah, we lost in the semifinals to the state. I don't think we played. I think we did play Newman actually. We lost to them in the semifinals, and um, yeah, we lost to them in the semifinals, so we had to go home. Yeah. Do you ever feel like, as a basketball player, especially in high school, like do you ever feel like y'all get figured out? Because in football that happens a lot. Like that we know, you know, every third down you're gonna throw deep to this guy. In basketball, do you ever feel like y'all get figured out in terms of y'all scheme or like y'all offense? Yeah, certain guys can tell like you know what, what strategy is coming, or you know it's like when you playing against a player that you, you played against before, you know where his moves is, you know. He's going to go to his right more than he's going to go to his left. You know, certain the scouting report tells everything. You know, a lot of video, we watch a lot of video in high school, so it always helps to, you know, get prepared for the game. So I think in the back of their mind, in the back of players' minds, they're always like, all right, I know what he's going to do next play. He did this, he, he shot the next play, he's going to go to the whole next play. All right, he, all right, he shot the next time. All right, he's going to go for the other field. Man, after that, it's just, what are you, what are you going to do after that? Right. It, it, you might have it in the back of your head, but are you going to stop it? What if he, you know, counter after that? So it's always in the back of someone's mind uh, what they're going to do, but it all it always ends up, are you going to stop it? Hey, have you ever had an experience where a coach is like, like wrong about something like, yo, he can't go left, so we playing left the whole game, he cook us left? Yeah, for sure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. But, um, you know, it, it's always, you come with, come across certain guys like that, you know, uh, you know, it might be on the scouting report, and they still might do it, and you might not stop it. 
but right. it's always in the game plan. You got to stick to the game plan and just, you know, trust. It's all about trusting your teammates, basically. You know, if you get beat, your teammates should help you out. No, so senior year, you lost. DJ went, DJ graduated your senior yeah, year? Yeah. So did. you become, like, the sole leader of the team? Yeah. And what was that like, you know, trying to carry you guys? Um, It was it was a humbling experience and another learning experience uh, because I never really led the team you know, out of the three years that I that I was there. You know, it was always Lamar my freshman year, um, Sheaf my sophomore year, Sheaf and Andre my sophomore year, and DJ my junior year. And now it was my turn to step up. So in my mind, it was just, you know, you got to get it together. This is your senior year. You got to have a big, a big year for you. And, you know, everything that we did, I learned from. You know, certain games that we lost, I learned from. Certain games we won, I lost from. But every day, I always try to, you know, I was I wasn't a big uh, speaker. I was I was more about leading by example. So that was I think that was one of one of my most big problems in high school. Um, but as it got as it, as the season got along, it got better to me. You know, speaking my mind and telling the guy what we need to do and how we need to do it. So I think I, I, I built a, enough character for that to, you know, for the guys to listen to me. No, so how did that how did that season end up going for you senior year? Um, it went great. I, like I said, we had another we had another great year, senior year. Um we only lost one time in the regular season, uh twice, uh to LaSalle and Newman. And we ended up playing Newman again in the championship. <laughs> uh I think we lost maybe about five, about five points. But I had a um, in the championship game. It was so close. Um, I had a three. I had a three to uh, three to shoot to make it, and they were up three. Shot I made. I missed the shot. It went in and out, mm-hmm. and that was the time you know where I thought like, all right, if this go in, I know we can beat them. But it went in and out. And then after that, they won the game. But like I said, you know, each year that we played them, it was always neck and neck. And they ended up finding a way to win. And, you know, we never really got that category championship that we wanted. Who was the, who was they? It's probably Le, Le Men's team. Le Men. Yeah, that's when, yeah. Le Men, Le Men, uh, Jaquan Newton. Derek, yeah, mm. Derek Stewart, Jaquan Newton. Yeah, them guys. Was the battle the, the, the intensity was still there once like Tony and them left? Yeah, it was always there from from my after my sophomore year. The intensity was always there. The rivalry after the, the sophomore year was the rivalry was building up each year. So the intensity and physicality was always there going in, going into the game. So it was either is either you there or you get knocked over. So it, it was like, what are you gonna do? We here now. The game is here. We got Newman. What you gonna do? You be scared or you gonna play. So uh, my senior year, I, I had to do I had to do a lot for my team, but I knew I knew I can do it. But I just needed everybody else to you know come with me, so, mm-hmm. and I try to lead by example as much as possible. You know, I just want to talk to you a little bit about your recruiting process. Like, mm-hmm. when did you really start getting recruiting from college? Um, my freshman year, freshman year and sophomore year. Um. Uh, you know, I, I had a great sophomore year. Freshman year was okay, but sophomore year the college just started rolling in more. And I think I got my first my my first uh my first scholarship was from uh, St. Joe's my freshman year. So after that, the you know the college level just started going higher and higher, and you know uh, colleges wanted me more and more. So who who were some of your favorites? You know during that time, like when it was time to decide. Um, Nova, Nova was one of them that I wanted to go to. Um, Nova, Temple, uh, they were like my top two at the time that I wanted to go to. But, I, uh, you know, I ended up going in a different direction. No, just speak about, you know, why did you, why did you choose to go in a different direction? Oh, um, well, me and my me and my best friend, uh, I mean, I mean, Tanksley, we wanted to go to high school together. Uh, we didn't go to high school together. He went to Emotel. So we figured, you know, we always talked to each other about playing together. So we said we was going to go to college together. And, you know, when it came down to making the uh, decision, you know, we felt 
Niagara was the best fit for us, where we gonna have great careers at. And that was after that, it was you know it was history. We had we had great careers there. Man, just talk a little bit what that's like, man, because a lot of us don't get the opportunity to go to the next level with our best friends. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, like, just when y'all finally decided to go there, what was it like when y'all got on campus? <laughs> it was it was strange because we didn't know, like, how to act, really. And, you know, we were still kids coming into college. When you go into college, it's, it's time to become a man. So us coming in, we were, we were like, still wondering how to, you know, you know, do do work on campus and go to practice, do this, do that. So we still was learning, you know, but it was it was it was a good experience for us because we learned quick. You know, and it was guys on our team, older guys on our team, that you know that would help us out about you know the campus life. So. No, so was it everything you expected? Yeah, for sure, everything, definitely everything I expected. And um. You know, you, you learn quick going into college. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a good wake-up call. For you. If you coming in there, you know, you think you're going to be the man and do all this other stuff, it's, it's not that easy, basically. You know, you got to go in there. You got to work just like everybody else working. Having your homie there, you didn't really get a lot of homesickness, huh? Nah, nah, not at all. So I was always cool. And, you know, me and him being best friends, going to school, going to school with your best friend, you know, it's easier. You know, you... You got a person that you can talk to and hang with all the time, so it was it was always easy for me, you know, uh, being around. So just talk about your freshman year on the floor, man. Freshman year, uh, throwing it to the fire, first game. Oh man, I, uh, first game we played uh, Central Connecticut. Um, so I had I'm telling you my stat line. I don't really like to do stat line, but I'm telling you my stat. I ended up with 23, six and five. So that was the first game. So in my mind, like, all right, I'm, I'm about to kill this whole season, whatever. So next game, we play Mizzou, Missouri. <laughs> next game, we play Missouri. They top 10 in the country. So I'm like, I just gave them 23. So I'm like, Mizzou going to get some too. Man, I ended that Missouri game with 10 points, 10 turnovers, and like, and like uh, two assists or something like that. Coach was a real wake up call for me, cussing me out in the locker room, cussing everybody out. We lost by at least forty, mm. and it was just a it was a whole new wake up call. Like, yo, this is not no game. Like, if you want to make a career out of this, like, you got to get on your stuff. You got to work on your craft, and you gotta, you know, you gotta do everything you can if you want to make it to the next level and play professionally. So, and that's what I did. Each day I was in the gym, shooting, you know, working on my handle, and you know, try to see. What can we do better, uh, you know, during the games, each each game that we played? What was the biggest, you know, you talk about that being a wake-up call, but what was the biggest difference for you on on the floor versus, you know, high school to college? Like, what was the the biggest difference? Um, I think the uh, transition, you know, uh, transition and uh, physicality. In college, you know, it's it's more lifting. Guys are lifting more and putting a lot of panels on for the college season. In high school, you were lifting, but it wasn't like it become extra big, you know what I mean? And uh, the physicality was always there in college games because every night you might you might have a guard that's 6'4", 205, all muscle, and the next day you might get a shoe guard that's guarding you that's like 6'6", six, six, and 2'10", 215 that's guarding you that's going, that's going to make you work. So I think uh, the transition from, you know, uh, lifting and, and, you know, just doing workouts, the lifting workouts and, you know, trying to, trying to, trying to be the, uh, the best player and um, understand that it's not, it's not the same as high school. You know, you're going to go into games where you're going to have players that's, that's better than you and you're going to have players that's not better than you, but you got to go into every game and play every possession. And how do you find your role in that if it's not already defined? Like you said, you were thrown into the fire. Yeah. So how do you find out what 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 is my role and what do I need to do to help this team win? How do you find that part out? You just you just gotta learn. You know, in practice, when you practice every day, you you learn your teammates, and you know you know what type of game they have. Like you know the shooters that you have on the team. I know, you know, each day that I practice, I always try to pick like a certain player out, 
and just learn from him. So I might pick a shooter out and, you know, pass the ball to him more times than I do anybody else. I'll be like, all right, he like the ball. He like the ball this way. Or he like the ball go this way and stuff like that. He like shooting, coming up screen and stuff like that. So I think that was best for me learning, you know, my teammates better than learning myself and my game first. And, um, and it helped us to be, you know, a great team overall. I know you're a great scorer, mm -hmm. you know, and, but you're a point guard. Yeah. Um, and we are in this transitional time in basketball where everybody, best athletes and stuff, really play point guard. They play the one, and they score a whole bunch of points at the one. Mm -hmm. um, let's describe like just you scoring at point guard and like versus being like a floor general and still trying to keep your your, your teammates happy. Mm -hmm. Um, it was all I was all well. I always thought my game was pass first. Like people, people that describe my game, they think I'm a, a scorer, and I don't really think I I like to pass way more than I do like scoring. Like I would like 20 assists rather than 20 points. 20 points, but you know, me for for me to be on Niagara, it was I had to do those. Type, I had to score those those points. You know, the team that we had, we didn't have a lot of great scores, so I had to you know make plays for the team, and you know I will always try to you know during games I will always try to you know, get everybody else involved to start it off, you know, get them going, get them hot. Cause I know I can, you know, I know I can get myself an open shot and you know, get to the line, and, you know, feel free. So I will always try to get everybody else involved and then, uh, you know, work my way from there and, and then start shooting, doing what I do. So how did that, you know, how did that freshman year end on the, uh, on the court? Freshman year, we had a bad record. Um, we lost in the, and we lost in the, the first round of playoffs. So that was it was a pretty bad year for me my freshman year. And um, you know, after that, after after the freshman year, I was just, you know, I was on some stuff in the summertime, like, it's time to get back, it's time to be better. Like I was thinking about high school. I was, I had a bad freshman year in high school. My sophomore year, we won the state chip. You know, why not come in my second year and try to win the chip now? So my whole mindset was, you know, trying to get my body right. And you know, trying to dominate anybody that stepped in front of me like that next year. Did you do anything different, like in your training and your preparation, to like take your game to that level? Oh, uh, I tried to eat different. You know, I wasn't the stuff I was eating. You know, I was eating a lot of salad and drinking a lot of water, and you know, trying to not eat uh, a lot of red meats and stuff like that. So, and I, I think I uh, I got bigger too. I was you know I was I was training myself to get a little bit bigger. Um, and, and I think that helped a lot, you know, for me, uh, my, my, my second year. So that helped a lot. And, um, you know, we ended up having a pretty good second year uh, in Niagara. We, we lost in the semifinals to Iona, but we won the regular season conference um, for the first time in, in, I don't know how many years. So that ended up being a good year for us. Wow, man, let's just talk about, like, all these minutes you played, man. <laughs> I, I looked up the stats, man. It was like you leading the conference and yeah. minutes. Like that's a lot of trouble your time, man. Did you feel that playing? Like Yeah, for sure, man. Yeah. You you feel it even in practice. Like playing all those minutes. And I didn't I didn't sit out any practice. I was always practice. I practiced every day. And to play all those minutes and to go to practice the next day, it was like, man, like, what if I got myself into? But, you know, it was it was like I said, it, it was something I had to do for the team. I had to play all those minutes. My freshman year, I was the only point guard. So I had to play the whole game, you know, to control the team. So I had to do those things for us to win and for us to, you know, try to compete at a high level uh, for other teams and stuff like that. So it was just something I had to do, you know, and, and I learned from it. You know, it was, it was, that's why I think a lot of my old man game came from playing all those minutes. <laughs> Probably having to figure out how I'm going to get it done, and I'm a little tired right now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Um, like, what yeah. would happen if you got in foul trouble? Oh, I would get cussed out, basically. The coach, you know, the coach was always on my head about, you know, not trying to foul as much because I was the only point guard. So, you know, he was always being in my ear, you know, you got one foul. You got two fouls. Chill out. Don't, don't reach nothing like that. Or, you know, if I get two fouls in the first half, he'd send me out maybe, like, the rest of the first half. And, you know, try to come back in and just be aggressive. But he always, you know, he was always in my ear about being aggressive and, you know, trying to start off, start have a good example from the start, you know. 
um, at Niagara, like who was like some of the best dudes you played against in the conference or, or I guess during that season, them two seasons there? Um, Sean, Sean Armand, great shooter. He went to Iona. Uh, AJ English, Iona, great shooter, playmaker. Um, who else? Uh, it was a couple guys. My freshman year, I think, my freshman year was pretty hard because the freshman class that was coming in, um, the guys were like every team had a, a good freshman coming in. Everybody, like every freshman started this year. Right. So coming in, it was pretty hard for me. And um, you know, the rookie of the year, the rookie of the year trophy was like, it was me, but it was like everybody else was like there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. And it all came down to, it all came down to um, who had the best record and the best stats, but. Yeah, I think I think the best player that I played against in Niagara was uh, Sean Alman and AJ Ames from Iona. They were they were so tough to beat because they they were literally shooting two steps over half court. Like they they were they were the type of guys where you play, you don't know what they're gonna do. Like them type of guys, they don't they might not run a set. They might just come down and shoot. And that was scary because it was like, all right, do I play up close? Mm -hmm. Do I play back? Do I do this? Do I do that? And um. I think those those guys are the most scariest. No, for sure. Um, I didn't even ask you, you know, did you go through any, like, you know, some guys have a hard time with the academics in school. <laughs> so I always like to ask, like, did you struggle in school or was school cool? Uh, in high school, I struggled a little bit. My, I think it was my uh, my junior year. Um, going into junior year, um, after my sophomore year, I struggled a little bit. Uh, and, um, you know, I had a little setback where I had to, you know, get focused and, you know, try to remain, you know, up to the task and stuff like that. So I think it's all about just being focused and trying to stay ready and, and knowing what you're doing for, man. Like, you can't play ball without good grades. So, and that was my main focus. I said, if I want to play ball, I got to, you know, I got to step it up. Was the work like significantly harder in college? Yes. Way harder. <laughs> <laughs> Way harder, man. Um, way harder. You know, the college courses is crazy, but you know, if you if you want to play, you you got to do the work. So it always it always works out itself. If, if you just you know stay in your lane, focus, do your work. You know, ask for help. I think that's one of the biggest problems for guys. They don't like asking for help. You know, if you need help, ask for help, and you know it get you on track. So you don't have to you know sit out or whatever, or sit out a game or whatever. Yeah, I just feel like being ineligible is like the craziest snowball, like to get back on track yeah. to like, like when would you actually be able to get on the floor again? Yeah. Like it's a big, like I really advise dudes to never go down that road right. you know, if they can help it, you right. know. Um, yeah, man, just, just I want to know the background story on this transition of you transferring the hospital, you know, like, you know, you make a big switch and, mm -hmm. you know, like what, what, what was going on? Um, well, the coach, the head coach, he was taking the job at Hofstra. So um, after that, it was like, damn, like, I came here for you. You made me come here. It's like, all right, man, man you going to, you taking another job at a different school. Like, what am I going to do? And, you know, for me and I mean, going to school together, we still want to go to school together. It was like, all right, are we going to switch? Are you going to go to your school and I'm going to go to my school? Because we didn't have the same schools with coolness, but we had certain ones with coolness. And, you know, we had to talk to each other, like, do you still want to go to school together or you want to, you know, just do your own thing? And we ended up, uh, you know, having a discussion, like, yeah, we might as well just stay, like, you know, stay together or whatever. It worked out for the most part um, so far, so why not just stick it out together? And um, we ended up, you know, talking to a couple schools, talking to Hofstra was one of them, and um, Hofstra was we felt was the best place for us to go because it was easy. We knew the coach, uh, we knew his coaching staff, we knew, you know, we knew what the workouts was, we knew what how practice was going to be run, we knew, you know, what type of what type of guy he was. And, you know, it was just an easy pick for us. We just we wanted to stay together and that's what we did. No, that's that's dope, man. You know, just um you know, you have a different view of that. Like, you know, I went through a coaching change. A lot of people come up here and sit through a coaching change, and they're kind of, like, broken about it because it's like, I came to school for you. Like you said, I came to school for you, yeah. and, and you're leaving. And you can't be mad at the guy for real for taking a, an opportunity probably to feed his family, you know, all yeah. the 
all the coaching jobs are not at the same salary at all, but, you know, especially depending on which levels, with conference, things like that. But you had the opportunity to, like, pretty much go winning, like, you was a part of the staff, yeah. you know. So in that, in that view, just talk about that, you know, having that opportunity to still continue your career with them. So I think it was great for me because uh, I think if I would have went anywhere else, I don't think my career would have been the same. But, you know, being with him, my career, I knew, you know, I knew what type of play he, he wanted in me and out of, out of his uh, players. So I already knew what the game plan was. So it was, it was basically easy for me. And, you know, I didn't want to start, you know, with a new school and a new coach, you know, you might go there and not, I might not get time on for it. So you never know what the situation was if, uh, you know, if I transferred to a different school. So I think, you know, going to Hofstra with, you know, Coach Mahalo was the best decision for me. Were you worried about, did they have anybody else on the, on the team already that you like, damn, I got to split the time with this guard or I got to beat this guy out? Um, when I went, when I, uh, I looked at the roster when I, before, you know, before I made my decision, I didn't see nobody where, now, no disrespect or anything. I didn't see nobody where, you know, I had to play behind somebody and stuff like that. But I knew I had to compete. But um, when I looked at the roster, I said, all right, I can, you know, I can rock out with this roster. I think we can win with this roster. You know, I had to sit out the first year. And um, I had to sit out the first year. But I, I knew, like, that next year we were going we to be good. And, uh, you know, it was, just, it was just an easy pick for me to go over there. No, just talk a little bit about, like, some of the other schools that you were actually considering. Um, well, the school, after, after I got my release papers, you know, it was about 75 schools that called from, you know, big schools, uh, ACC, the SEC. Um, well, you, you were a thousand point scorer in two seasons. Yeah. Let's not, let's not, let's, 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 let's not, you're very humble and I appreciate that you being humble yeah. and you ain't cocky and nothing, but yeah. let's just keep it a bean. Like you played as a freshman, you got, you played a lot of minutes. Yeah. You scored a thousand points in two years. Yeah. And um, 76 yeah. calls? Or? Yeah, 76. Around like 76. That's what, that's what one of my uh, AAU coaches, Lonnie Larry, had told me. You know, he said, um, you know, schools were calling. The big schools were calling for me to, to come in. And, you know, I, I just, I didn't want to start over. I just, you know, I wanted to go somewhere where I can just be happy and know that I can still play with my best friend and, you know, still – come in and do what I do and, you know, try to win a championship for us. No, what was it like sitting out for that year, you know, because mm. I can only imagine, you know? That's probably one of the worst years ever because it's like, it's like you're sitting out, but you're watching your team lose, win, and you can't. That year I had, I couldn't go on trips, so I would have to stay back and watch the game. But I think the worst part was when we played at home, I had to, I get, I got to sit on the bench so I was up close and personal every game just watching it. And it was just like, man, I got this jumpsuit on. I'm going to go suit up. Like, I want to suit up. But it was just so hard. I had to sit out that year. And, you know, it was a struggle. But I think that year was one of my best years as well just because I got better. You know, the practices the practices were basically my games. You know, I treated practice as my game. You know, I come into practice, you know, they might – the other guys on the team, they might come back in from playing the next night and got to practice this morning. I'm up early. I'm, hey, let's go. I'm here. Let's go. And them guys probably tired from the day before. I'm like, no, nah, I'm going to make y'all work. Y'all, they playing against the second team. I'm going to make y'all work. So I always treated the practices as my game. So I, I think that helped a lot, uh, me building my craft and, you know, helping my career take off. So do you feel like, I don't know you could actually speak to this, but like, did you feel like the coach was like, yeah, man, wait till he come back after this year, he sit out? Like, did you feel like that's how he worked? He was with you? Um, no, not really. He, I, I just thought, you know, he, he, I knew in the back of his mind he wanted me to come, but it was like uh, he didn't want to say it to, like, directly towards me. But, you know, in the back of my mind, uh, I knew he wanted to come. Uh, he wanted me to come. But uh, after I got my release papers from Niagara, they didn't block. You know, they, they can block certain schools from you going, from you going to, and they didn't block Hofstra. So in the back of my mind, I was like, I, I might give Hofstra a chance. You know, I might I might try to go there with him if, if me and I mean don't, you know, split up or whatever. And, you know, once I think I had to talk with one of the assistant coaches, 
And, uh, you know, they said, you know, if you, if you would like to come, I know you got all these other schools that want you, but, you know, we would still basically want you to come come over if you can. You're going to have to sit out a year, but, you know, you just got to, you just got to, you know, work hard and, and go from there. Like when y'all would, when, I wonder if like, when he, y'all would come up short in games, he probably looking at you at the end of the bench like, <laughs> We had you out here. <laughs> certain games, yeah. Certain games, you look down. Like, certain, sometimes, like, we had, I don't want to put no names out, but we had a couple guys, you know, you, you always get certain guys on the team that do dumb dumb mistakes. So, sometimes in the games, you know, a guy will make a mistake, and he would just look down at the end of the bench and be like, we had you. It was, this wouldn't happen. That's right. basically, you know, what he was saying. But, yeah, it was always like that during games. So what was it like when you finally could be able to play and get on the floor? Like, did he just give you the reins or is it something that you had to come earn? It was it was basically the same as me coming in as a freshman. He basically handed me the ball and I just said, through you, just run the team. You know, um, I trust you with the ball. I trust you leading the team. And, you know, my junior year, we had a great year. So uh, I think it was just we had that, that complete trust of each other, me, me controlling the team and him. Allow me to, you know, you know, not not run a play all the way through, or you know, come down and transition and, and make a play for somebody or make a play uh, for somebody else, and you know, it, it was just complete trust between both of us. And that probably that elevated your game. Yeah, for sure. What did you What did you feel like you added to the game that was different from Niagara to Hofstra? Um, making plays in transition. I think I got better at making plays in transition. Uh, you know, for other people other than myself, and, um, you know, I always, when I was in Niagara, it was, uh, I made plays, but it wasn't always the right play, but, you know, in Hofstra, I got better at it, and uh, making plays for shooters, I would always find shooters out in the open, so I think that helped us big on winning games, uh, a lot of transition points, and, you know, trusting my teammates to make shots. Well, for sure, for sure. So, by this time, you're getting all these accolades. You're just racking them up. Do you ever feel a little big-headed, or you ever be like, "I was tripping, like I was feeling myself"? Or no, I'm always, I'm, I'm always humble, man. I don't really, I don't even talk about like accolades and stuff like that. I always try to be humble and and just move on to the next thing. You know, I don't really like to talk about stuff like that. But you know, I try to be humble and you know just work on my game and try to be the best player I can be. I don't. Accolades is accolades. You, if you don't win, it doesn't matter. That was my, one of my biggest things. If you if you're not winning, the accolades don't mean nothing. So, uh, so how how did how did your senior year go? And how you know how did you end your career up there? Well, uh, my senior year, I, uh, I scored a thousand points my senior year. Real humbly, <laughs> I scored a thousand points, guys. One zero zero. I ended up, <laughs> I ended up scoring another thousand points, and um, we ended up losing the championship my senior year. But that 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 took my junior year. We lost. Um, we lost in the semifinals on the on a buzzer beater, mm. triple overtime. That was heartbreaking because we were supposed to go that year. Like we was we were supposed to go that year, and they, uh, you know they hit a buzzer beater. But my senior year, um, we lost in the championship, and um, we ended up playing in the NIT against uh, Maryland, and we lost to them. But overall, my senior year was a pretty good year. I ended up getting player of the year and uh, a bunch of other, you know, accolades and stuff like this. So, like, at this point in your, in your mind, like, what do you think? You're thinking NBA? you thinking at least I could play pro overseas? Well, NBA was always the goal, but, you know, um, I had to try to, you know, get a couple NBA workouts to do that. But um, NBA was always in the back of my mind. Like, I want to I wanna play for the NBA, but if it didn't come, I would like to do overseas or, you know, the G League and see how to help. So what was that process like, you know, after after your senior season? Um, it was it was a little struggle because my, my my first agent, I didn't get uh I didn't I only had one NBA workout. So it was kinda hard for me. Uh my first agent, he only he didn't give me the first he didn't give me an NBA workout, my second agent did. So it was hard for me to try to make an NBA team or try to play in the summer league when none of the teams looked at my game basically. And um so it was it was it was a bad transition for me in my career coming out of uh, college. So uh after that after that my uh 
my second agent, he got me a New York New York mix on um, best pro workout. And I showed my talent there. I think I had a pretty good, pretty good workout. But overall it was just it was bad timing at that time. Hey, elaborate on that. Like why why would you say it was bad timing? Because everything, every everybody was already, you know, getting picked up and the basically the summer rosters for playing summer league was already like locked in. So it was hard for me to try to showcase my talent when basically I only had one workout, you know, and that kinda that kind of went downward a little bit, but then again it still helped me out. So what was next for you? Once the once that once that opportunity kind of shut, you know, like what do you think it meant to me? Like, damn, am I gonna get a chance? Like did, did you did you get down about it at all? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I got down about it. I always uh when I was thinking, I'm like, damn, I can't I'm not gonna be able to play in the NBA now. Um, I'm not gonna be able to do this or do that. But, you know, after that workout, uh I tried to keep a positive mentality about it. You know, I'm like, somebody's gonna call. You know, you have you have a good resume. Uh, college resume, so you know somebody's gonna like your game. Somebody need a point guard, you know, to make plays for him and stuff like that. So in the back of my mind, I was just being positive and, and just try to be patient. You know, sometimes you might not get the first deal or second deal. You just gotta be patient and, and just you know let God take it. So what what really happened next? Like how long how long were you waiting for the phone to ring? Um, I think I waited maybe after that after that. New York workout, I think I waited maybe like a month after I had got my first deal. It was in Greece. So I got that deal. And, you know, after that, after I got the deal, it was, all right, now it's time to start working. Now you about to be a pro. And it was like, you got to get everything right. So um, everything just came quickly and hit me kind of hard. So it was, it, was, uh, it, was a, it was a fast transition. How did you like being over there in Greece, though? Greece was, Greece was good. I think that was the best place so far that I've been in playing while I was professionally. Um, that was like the best place, uh, you know, living wise. You know, being over there was, um, you know, you can walk the streets and, and um, you know, talk to people and stuff like that. Even though it's a different culture, you can, you know, go around and talk to people and stuff like that. So I think living wise was the best, that was the best place for me. And um, playing ball, it was, it was tough. Playing ball was tough because it uh, was one of the tougher leagues to play in. And me coming in as a rookie, they don't really like rookies playing uh, playing a lot in, in that league because it's, it's, it's a tough league. So it was like you got to be prepared. For that. So like, did you play much or did you come in and start? Or I played. I started, but I didn't have a great. I didn't have a great uh, couple games there. I only stayed. I didn't stay in Greece for long. I, I think I stayed in Greece maybe two or three months, and then after I, I, I left. Like so, during mid-season or? Yeah, during mid-season. You took another deal where you? Yeah, I came home. It was it was like a whole thing where I got fired, I came home, and in the back of my mind, it was like, I'm like, oh, I don't even think I want to play basketball anymore. First of all, we talking about playing basketball. I'm sorry, I can't mm-hmm. equate. We playing ball. I got fired. Like how yeah. you just put that together? Yeah. So they 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 released you. Yeah. And you went home. You're like, how how did you how did you reflect on that? It was just in, in the back of my mind. I'm like, I'm like, all right, I don't even like ball. Anymore. It was it was that type of experience where like I was thinking about quitting, and I sat I sat down maybe the whole the whole rest of the year. And, and just thought about it, like, do I really want to still play ball? Do I really want this to happen to me again? Like, and, you know, I think after that, that year had passed, um, you know, I, I started thinking, I said, you know what, you got you to gotta stick to it. You, you're better than this. You played bad, you played, you played bad over there, but you can, you can be better. You can work on your game. You can do much more than you did in Greece. And, you know, after that, I had got a deal. I, I started talking to my agent again, and, you know, he got me to play in Finland. After that, it was, uh, you know, I went to Finland and had a good season. During that time when you were home, like, what did you do for that whole year? Like, um, I was just basically, you know, like I said, after I, after I got released, it was like, I was just miserable. You know, I was just, like, certain days I wouldn't come outside. I wouldn't talk to nobody. And nobody, nobody really knew it, but I was just, I was just miserable. I didn't want to, I didn't want to do anything. I just wanted to be in the house. I didn't want nobody to know that I was released from the team. And, 
you know, and I think for a couple of weeks, nobody didn't know I was home because I didn't talk to them. I've been, I had been home for maybe like three weeks. Nobody, not even my family members, not my friends, none of them. I didn't want to tell nobody. And um, so yeah, I was just basically in the house watching TV, you know, just just chilling basically. And what was that like? You was you was embarrassed to be released, or yeah. like? I was, I was I was embarrassed and I didn't want nobody, you know, you know, you got certain people that, you know, talk behind the scenes and stuff like that. So it was just, I didn't want to be embarrassed. So I was just like, I'm just keeping to myself and not talking to nobody and just staying out. So so when you got the new deal, like how long did it take him to put that together before you went over there to Finland? Um, but when I started working out, when I started working out again, I think I started working out in uh, maybe around like February around February that year, and I said, I wanted to play ball again, I started talking to him. I had got a deal maybe around July. I had got that deal around July. He said, Finland, you know, Finland wanted to take a chance on you. Do you want to do it? I said, yeah, you know, let's, let's try it out. I think, I think I'm better now, I'm mentally focused, and I know what I got to do to, to be a pro. You know, after I got that deal and went over there, you know, uh, I had a, I had a good season, like I said. It was just everything. I was on a I was on a pro mentality. Like I knew what I had to do to to stay over there and not get released. And what were, and what are some of them things? Being in the gym, working on your craft, um, and just uh, you know bringing it every day in practice. You know they they look at you. You might not think you you might not be practicing hard, but they looking at that. You know you might not be in the gym every day. They looking at that. So you got to make sure you got to stay on your job because they can release you and get a, another American. So my whole thing was stay in the gym, go home, come back, get back in the gym, shoot, and work on your craft. That was it. That was my whole life of being over there in the It was just working on your craft. And if you was doing something else, then you shouldn't be doing it. So I didn't want to get released again. So I, I didn't want to have that feeling of being released again. For sure. So, was there any type of adjustment to the game itself? Like, was basketball different from playing in college to playing overseas pro? Like, like is the game itself different? Yeah, yeah, definitely. is is way more physical, way more physical. Uh, meaning like the screens, the screens, and uh, and and the, and the way they play over there. Like certain fouls, they're not giving you certain fouls for going to the hole and jumping into a guy and trying to, they're not giving you that. Like trying to draw contact? Yeah, trying to draw contact, they might not give you that. So if you was going to the hole, you got to make sure you try to finish instead of, you know, trying to get a foul or whatever. And I think basically trying to play their game instead of playing the American way. You got to play the way they play, you know, the way they, they have their strategy uh, overseas, basically. What are, what are the native players like? What, are the, what does a native player game look like? Um, some you you come across a lot of guys that's like crafty, yeah. That's like very crafty, and you might have a certain older guy that been that been at that that club for a while, and you know he's he might be old, but he still got moves. Like he might shake you up, hit you with some little crafty. You might be like, damn, you you like thirty something, like how you how your bones still move like that, busy? <laughs> but yeah, it's it's all like a lot of guys over there are very crafty and, and skillful. Do you get the sense of like, you know, I know you talked about like trying to be a pro. Do you get the sense of like, yo, this is my job. Like older guys are like, I'm, I gotta secure my roster spot. Like I'm not gonna help young guy out. Like, or I, I, I just think this is my job. Uh, that's that's what I always think. Like I, I have a job to do. Everybody has a job to do. So you don't want to lose your job. You just, it's basically starting over again. So I just try to do my job at a, you know, at a high rate and and just try to have the, the best season possible of being over there. You know, sometimes being over there, you being over there by yourself is is not as easy, but you get to do something that you love, playing ball, and get paid for it. Why not try to enjoy it and, you know, just work your ass off? No, just speak about that since we stumbled into that. You know, like, what is it like finally that, you know, I've been playing this game since you was eight, you said eight or mm-hmm. ten. You been playing the game basically the majority of your life. Yeah. Like, what is it that like to finally be like I could get paid to, to play a game I love that I was playing for free for all this time? It's easy. It's easy, man. Now it's just you, you just you going over there to do something. You going over there that you 
doing something that you love to do. So it's easy. The money is you're gonna get money. You wanna you wanna feed your family and stuff like that. But for me, I love the game of basketball. So for me, being over there just to play basketball, stuff like that, it's it's easy for me. It comes easy. Um, you know, the money will come and go. But for me playing basketball, I think that's probably the easiest thing for me to uh, you know be over there and try to transition my game into this. You know, so how do, how does your season of Finland go? Uh, it was we had a pretty good team. Uh, the other American, the other three Americans that I had on my team were pretty good, and um, you know we lost. I think we lost in the playoffs, first round, 3-0. So at least we made it to the playoffs. The, the year before that, before I came, they didn't make the playoffs. So I was I was happy with that. Me helping the team get to the playoffs, you know, playoff spot. Um, you know, I had a I had a good season. Um, I had good numbers. And, you know, I, I, I felt like I was going in the right direction to, you know, build my resume higher and higher. Like that. So where did you end up after that? Uh, I went to Hungary. Hungary. I'm not sure where exactly where that is. It's in Europe. It's, uh, it's in Europe. I don't know if I'm saying it. I don't know if it's Hungary or Hungary. It's either. It's two you were there. Yeah, yeah, I was there. <laughs> <laughs> I was there basically. But, yeah, I, I was I was there. And, um, yeah, that season, that season we had a, a okay season as well. Um, I was the only American, so it was kind of harder because I had a, a a bunch of older guys on my team, and um, so I had to work with what I had to work with. But you know that that season was a little harder than it was in Finland. So you felt like you had to do more of the lifting. You had to yeah. carry us, carry them a little bit more. Yeah, I, and I that that season I was the only point guard on that team this past year in Hungary. So that made it even harder because I had to. I had to make plays for the whole team, other than myself. What is it like being the only American on a team? <laughs> Stressful, because <laughs> it's like it's like you, you know, after after you practice and stuff like that. Sometimes you want to just chill and talk to your friend, or you know, you might want to go out or something like that. So, me being the only American, it was like I was, it was times where I was just stressful, like living there because I didn't get the talk to certain people because of the time difference and stuff like that. But yeah, it was it wasn't it wasn't that good for me last year. But um but you, you gotta learn how to adjust and you know try to adjust to the culture and the time difference of being at a certain place. Not to mention, I didn't even think about this like in basketball you communicate, you know, you're calling out screens and you're talking. Yeah. You're American. Yeah. <laughs> and and you gotta these are is native languages and stuff like that. Is that a barrier on the team? Sometimes, like certain, like certain games, like when you over there, when you over there and, and practice and stuff like that, you learn certain words. And so, during a game, it might come into a screen. It might be screen right, but they might say it. A guy might say it. He might not be good at English, but he might say it in the Hungarian language or Finnish language, wherever country you're at. And you might be like, all right, I heard that. I know that word. So it's like right. it's like a good transition. But then again, if you don't know, it's like, oh, man, I'm about to get hit the screen. Smack. So, and, and, that, and that split second of hesitation, uh, yeah. I got to process this yeah. another language. Hold on. I remember this. Yeah. It's this side. Like, <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Exactly. Yep. So, but it, I think you being being out there and, you know, trying to learn the culture, it helps a lot, you know, with, uh, Especially with the guys on the team being from that from that country, it helps a lot with you trying to learn their culture. Do you feel like you know playing overseas? You know, you know, obviously, what is it? Second to soccer, we talked about. Yeah. Do you feel like in 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 the leagues, the native guys do they feel type of way about the American players being there? Uh, some yeah, some guys do. Um, sometimes it might be a little. Uh, you might have a little dispute. Uh, with guys, you know, with the. The local guys having a problem with the American guys because you know they're getting more time or they're doing they're playing uh, playing more minutes and doing this for the team other than the local guys not playing as much. So you might come across a couple guys that's a little jealous and stuff like that. Is oftentimes in the leagues uh, the best players in the leagues are the Americans? Yeah, most of the time the Americans, but you might. Uh, come across a guy that's that might be from a different country. He might not be from that same country, but he might have played. He might have played in this country and, and been on that team. And he might like you might get a Serbian dude that that played in Hungary, but 
but he might be tough, super mm. tough. So you never you never know what you can expect when you leave. No, do y'all ever go into games where y'all like underestimate people when they really run y'all out the gym? Yeah, it was a couple games like that, man. It was a couple games where you you look like during warm ups, you might you might be warming up. You look at the you look at the other side, they're like they miss a shot, they miss layups. You know, they blow this team up. You know, they come once the ball go up, it's like it's a whole different story. They come out pressing you and talking trash and stuff like that. So it, I never I never tried to you know, um, damn my opponent. I always try to, you know, respect, respect my opponent at all times. No, just talk to me a little bit, you know, some of the differences uh, about as a point guard controlling the game in college versus trying to control the game in the pros. Um, controlling the game in college, it was, uh, it was much more, I think it was much more easier because, um, not easier, but more uh, strategic. Um, you know, you, you know what type of defense you're playing against. Uh, you know what the you know what you know what type of guys that you're playing against every night. And overseas, it was just like, you know, it was basically like thrown into the fire. You knew the scouting report, but you never knew like what type of play that you were going to get playing against. You know I mean? And uh, so it was it was a different transition for me, but once you learn how to you know transition from college to being a pro, it's it's it's, a, it's an easy it's an easy game for you. So it's like y'all almost have to mature again. Yeah, it's basically like mature all over again. Yeah. So where are you now? You know, in, in your career now? Uh, this would be my fourth year playing professionally. Uh, I haven't signed a deal yet, so I'm still waiting. Um, yeah, this would be my fourth year, and you know, I'm just I'm just ready to. To make it make it work, man. Wherever I go, just try to you know play the game that I love and, and just go from there. You know, see what happens from there. You never know. I might try to you know do the NBA thing or the G League thing and play for a summer league next year, summer league team next year, and you never know what can happen. Are you still like working out and training? Yeah, for sure. Uh, every time I come on, every summer I always you know work out every day, uh, five six days a week. And, you know, try to. I try to take the weekends off to just chill and rest my body because I going going for six days for the rest of the summer. That's you know that's a lot on your body. So um, you know I try to take the weekends off, but you know you always got to stay sharp on your game because you never know. You know I can I can sign a deal right now and they might need me next week. Mm. So you never know what you're gonna get. So you always got to stay ready. So that yeah, that's a part of that's a part of it. A yeah. Part of being a pro is is. Always being ready for the next opportunity. Yeah, always being ready. You never, you never know, man. Who's Wanya Green now? You know, versus the guy that <laughs> I, I seen at Carroll. Um, just a more mature, humble guy. Um, trying to be an entrepreneur, and you know, just just going with everyday life, man. Loving, loving my family, loving my friends, and just trying to trying to you know play the game as long as I can and have a great career and. You know, after my career over, uh, just you know, try to try to stay stay down stay down to earth. What are some of your other interests? You said you not you mentioned trying to be an entrepreneur. Like, what are some of your other interests outside of basketball? Um, I want to I want to do real estate. You know, I want I want to do the real estate thing, and uh, you know, hopefully, you know, I try to you know get some classes and stuff like that uh, probably next summer, and, and try to be like a real estate agent. And, Go from there and try to work on that. When did you when you did you graduate when you finished school up there? Yeah. What did you what did you uh, major in? Uh, I majored in sociology and minor in business. Okay. Yeah. Well, oh, that's dope, man. Um, just getting to the end of this, man. Can you recommend me three three athletes I can interview on the podcast? Three athletes. Uh, I'm gonna go with Jalen Bond. Uh, he went to Plymouth White Marsh. Um, uh, Sean Austin. Cheers. Um, he went to Temple, uh, and I'm gonna go with uh, James Bell. James Bell. James Bell. He went to Villanova. Okay. Well, hopefully you can connect me with these guys, and I can get them on here, man. If not this season, next season, you know, I'm always, I'm always asking, man. I like to keep a vote of, of, in my head of like guys that people mention or this is one of the best guys I played with or played against. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to pull him up and see if he would do the show. So, yeah. man, we want to thank you for coming up here doing the show, man, telling your story, man. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Thank yeah. you, man.
Thanks. Well, put that.